Hey okay. Yuri, hi. Hi, how are you? Good. Where are you? Uh, I'm in Margate, actually. Like I'm not in London. In Margate, by the seaside. Yeah. So, what do you? What happens in Margate? Why are you? Why are you down in Margate? Well, actually, like, um, like last year, like I sort of like, moved half life in Margate. Um, I mainly like uh, working like weekdays in London, and weekend in like Margate time. But now, since lockdown happened, I stuck in Margate pretty much since March. So. It's quite like relaxing to be honest, and uh, but same time I have to think about new lifestyle in here. I think. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you, and what do you do? Yeah, so basically uh, I'm positioning as sound designer and also sound artist as well. Um, my output is like quite several, like such as installation and also like actual sound design and also product design as well. But uh, something, uh, music and the sound is my main like, kind of material to express work. work. And uh, you're also at working at Pentagram now. So how does, how does that work? Do you, do you do sound design for Pentagram? You work with them on projects? Give us some examples of the kind of things you do. At yeah, so I think like, we have partnership with as a, like 24 partners anyway, and they're kind of graphic designer background. And I'm helping for more about sound identity side and also like anything about the music and sound related and also experiential design I'm doing, like I'm helping for the project. And also I'm still continue like doing like a sculpture and the art project based on the pentagram as well. So it's really like in, in the nature, like it doesn't much change since like I joined the pentagram, but uh, um, it's kind of like creating like a way for like sound identity design and the more about digging into that field now. Tell us what is sound design? I mean, uh, mm. we, we talk about sound designers at Dazeem because we do a lot of video and we mm. work with sound designers. But if, if someone hasn't heard of that phrase before, how would you describe what a sound designer is and what they do? Yeah, yeah. so like sound design is like really like uh, quite vague terms, isn't it? Like some people say sound design as a, um, like a kind of like a special sound effect for film and so on. That could be called sound design as well. But my kind of opinion about sound design is all about kind of uh, one side of the aspect is kind of more sound branding and like how like music and the sound like link with kind of company identity as well. But at the same time, I'm like really seriously concerning about how, what kind of sound could fit in our daily life, like such as um, like these days, like there's a lot of like IoT product in our house and the primal communication is always audible and you talk into the device and controlling it. So there's really a lot of space to redesigning uh, like sound content these days. And also I'm considering for electric car and so on, like electric vehicle, it's kind of lost uh, sound like it used to have. And we have to add like a new sound identity on top. So like sound design is all about kind of redesigning what kind of soundscape surrounding us. And uh, like it must work as betterment as well. And I guess sound of all the senses, sound gets pushed down because the visual dominates so much today, especially in a situation like this, when we're, we're looking at each other on a screen. Um, how important is sound compared to other senses? And do you think it gets neglected a bit, the importance of it? Yeah, I think, um... I would say like sound, you know, there's five senses that like human being has, like kind of like seeing and smelling and also like tasting and also kind of feeling and also like, like hearing as well. And the hearing and also smelling is one of the quite the closest sense to the brain and quite powerful like a sense like a human has. So I do think like uh, um, sound have to be really carefully designed um, but uh, my opinion, like uh, it's not much like significant development in sound design happened like past couple of decades actually, because uh, I would say visual art, visual like design, obviously kind of communication design is kind of main things for a long time. And also uh, like uh, smell and also tasting like so much food design going on. And also uh, haptics design was quite popular 
like quite a while now. But uh, I haven't really like seen like a good example or like a good survey about like sound design for a long time. So I do think like this is, like, I would say like, most of the sense quite important, but the uh, sound design has been sort of forgotten and not really touched for a while. So I feel like kind of it's now it's time to consider about sound design. You did a, an interview with Dazeen um, a week ago or, or more saying that during the coronavirus pandemic, sound was even more important because well because that we, we're losing a lot of the visual clues through talking through screens for example and very very sensitive to to interruption and noise and things like that tell us a little bit about that how the current lockdown situation has changed the way we relate to sound because um, we're in unusual time, we stuck into the kind of house, kind of, you know, more than ever, I think, like uh, people have to spend time, like a really domestic environment. And uh, mainly like your communication is really like a Zoom or like kind of Skype with the kind of client or talk with kind of your family and so on. And uh, like people start realizing it kind of acoustic of the room, like how much like, sound is kind of like sounding around and also any noise in the behind. And also you are staying in the home with kind of uh, really start noticing about what kind of sound and the noises surrounding you. So I think this is really like a interesting moment people start more about conscious or sensitive about sound. So I, I do think like, you know, like importance and sound that doesn't really change like before pandemic or after, but uh, this really precious timing to be considering about it, I feel. But definitely speaking personally, when the, the lockdown first started, there was silence. And actually, I really liked it. And, you know, people talk about being able to hear the birds more um, and um, being able to hear just sounds in the house and, and just the sound of, of the wind in the trees and everything. But as the, the noises of, of city life have come back, I've actually started to become quite angry about it because yeah. you didn't notice how noisy it was before. It was, is that life is really noisy, isn't it? Mm. And also I, I would say like uh, public sound design, like, uh, you know, people used to commuting every morning with kind of public transport and uh, how much like, uh, you know, some bad sound or like some acoustic of the kind of public space is not really well considered. And that's quite shocking in the way, like if you kind of outside kind of comfortable environment that start outside, actually you will notice more things. And such as like, I always like showing why the example of sound design for like a Dockland rail, rail like a way, um, I think it's house London, like a rail line, um, which is actually um, has a good kind of like a train departure sound. So each station stop and making really high frequency note to notice, noticing you are approaching to the station, and which is actually 2200 hertz, actually really like vibrating your eardrum in the way so there's a lot of things missing and not only England like many countries has got ignorance or like almost not considering for like soundings and soundscapes so which is really like a, yeah again like a, probably like a, you will really notice more I think. And um, You studied at the Royal College of Art but why did you decide to be a sound designer and not a DJ or a composer or a guitarist in a rock band? What was it about sound design that appealed to you? Well, like in the beginning, I wished to be a musician anyway, my, to look back my career. So uh, I tried to be like, a, in the beginning of more about punk music band I, I used to be in, and I became a DJ after that, and I tried to be established myself. But my biggest difficulty for like learning music is always kind of hard to understand like you cannot read any musical scores so if you want to be professional you have to know sort of like uh, music theory and it, because of my like difficulty for dyslexic and really hard to understand but uh, I do have a lot of like, knowledge about how sound work and in previous career and after joining um, like Royal College of Art kind of I was kind of thinking combined between design thought and also like my sound knowledge, that's kind of natural for me into the, my position for like sound designer. I never thought about that before, that if you're dyslexic, you might not be able to read a musical score, but that's the same, I suppose, as if you can't read text. Mm, absolutely, yeah. So I don't know, that I, I, I tried to force me to study like uh, music, leading musical score in many, many years. 
and I never achieved that. So I thought I'm kind of like some disability or something to understanding things, but uh, clearly pointing out after survey, I'm sorry, I kind of like diagnosed myself as a, um, like a dyslexic, like this one was caused by that problem. So it's, it's really hard to lead for me still. And is your dyslexia just for music or for music and text as well? Both, yeah. So I have both like a dyslexic and a dysgraphia. So I think in general, without kind of computer, it's quite hard to like communicate with, you know, kind of typing and stuff is quite difficult. So always have to editing like when you're writing an email. So I think you've prepared a presentation for us that mm, um, okay. shows us some of your work and also allows us to hear some of your work. Do you want to share that with us now? Yes. Okay, let me try that. Okay, so it's like just like a general presentation. So, so my name is Yuri Suki and uh, I'm working for um, like a lot of projects based on sound and music. And then kind of outcome again, like uh, quite diverse, like doing in musical installation and also like making music video and making product and uh, really that kind of output is varied. But uh, always kind of my fundamental question for my practice, how sound defines every corner of design experience. And then um, one aspect sound quite working well um, is more about the kind of social and the communication aspect. And the one project I've done for High Museum Art in Atlanta um, a couple of years ago called Sonic Playground. So basically like uh, um, Atlanta is a city is quite unique in a way because uh, um, a lot of creative industry coming into that city and the new communities coming in. And uh, I think uh, that museum has got really amazing like a large space in front of the museum and called piazza and they um, commissioned me to create something and like place for like people to prank and like almost like playground kind of proposal but my idea is kind of thinking about community so existing community and also new community coming together and uh, how people can interact how i can prepare a moment people start conversation and this sculpture is like basically acoustic kind of uh, um, engineering behind. So if you're talking to the one side of the trumpet horn, like distribute in quite a unique way. And then, so like people just randomly coming in, talking to that. And then like even you don't know, like completely strangers, accidentally you can start conversation. And uh, this is kind of looks like just fun playground pieces, but uh, this is purpose to increase communication in the way. And then almost horn is quite anonymous. Like if you're hiding your face as well, so you can be honest, like you can say anything what you want to say as well. And then in this sculpture working quite well in the more of the kind of interactive part as well. So like uh, some people like just like shouting or like never be shy in front of like this sculpture. Hello. Hello. Yeah, you can hear me. This installation is about standing outside of the piazza area, but it's kind of like a start bonding like people and start conversation, increase communication audible communication opportunity. So that was kind of one of my project. And then uh, this concept lead to one project called the Welcome Chorus Project for Tana Contemporary last year. So as I say, I'm living in Margate and uh, Margate is quite a unique city because uh, this couple of years, like let's say this 10 years, people like many young couple from London start moving to this city. And uh, I think like Margate um, used to have like quite, um, like a like wealthy like a city because of the tourism attraction but after budget airline like introduced the kind of industry kind of went down as well but uh, something unique about this area is kind of has got the existing community and the new community coming in and when i got to this commission i was proposing to have sort of like a in a, through the kind of audible communication, like through co-creative platform to make audible like uh, something creation. And I propose to make this installation called the Welcome Chorus. So idea behind is that this small town like Margate has got almost five or six different 
wire group in here. And then uh, something I note, I like, uh, research quite a lot about area and there's not much like music describing about the market itself. And my idea is kind of creating kind of a, a, a chorus piece through the kind of like, like you know, people in a, this local area. And then like basically like 2,000 to 3,000 people together to creating one specific music. So to able to do this one, like we use artificial intelligence. So we have been working with Tana Contemporary uh, quite a lot to conducting workshop about um, correcting words and the melody and from like a different part of the Kent as well, and correcting a lot of like words and also material for this piece. And then uh, this installation has got microphone as well, like you can keep feeding like your own like uh, opinion about market, celebrations of like a market, and to creating sort of anthem of the market song. And then, um, so like uh, to be able to do this one, like again, like you, we use like a artificial intelligence machine learning method. Uh, we worked with quite amazing consultancy called the Counterpoint. So uh, basically, we feed like uh, like thirty thousand or forty thousand different words and also a lot of different melody aspect, and we kind of like uh, kept like feeding into the algorithm, and this like algorithm keep creating like brand new music every 15 minutes. So if you like, uh, so this is the example, um, like a sound, what kind of sound are coming from? Do to a falling out, did we learn solidarity, the local authority started and forcing to clean up after the statue left, which was a roadblock to the recent built some kind of structures, but the statue has been moved to a more accessible place where it will be safe for future generations. And even lyrics coming in here, the people like a, um, just kind of like a feed into the kind of through the microphone, we conducted workshop or corrected word and reflecting into the kind of brand new lyrics. And uh, surprisingly, all like lyrics kind of make sense in the grammar way. And then the like, music is also like a, um, like a kind of work so it's kind of proper choir piece. So this is how it looks like for the final installation. And then, so I think a highlight for this project is uh, um, I collaborated working with like a local choir group, uh, Margaret Social uh, Choir like a group, and uh, like basically this choir is created by like artificial intelligence algorithm, and which is based on the people submit word and so music fragment, and then uh, we actually have a kind of performance a girl choir group to singing this song. and the sound are uh, kind of a social recording people and increase the communication. That's one of the I'm gonna achieve through like an installation based project. At the same time, I'm working for uh, like a musician because uh, um, they have a really like great thought about kind of speculative vision for the future and how like music gonna be as well. So like uh, I collaborated working for creating musical instruments. So one example is uh, uh, I was working for a musician called Will I Am, and he's from Black Eyed Peas, and created three different kind of mechanical robotic musical instruments, and then. Um, 
So like this is all like a control by digital signal, but the original kind of performance is like acted by like real musician, like such as Sergio Mendes. So like left side is actually a kind of piano and uh, we kind of recorded his play like touch and the strength of the kind of key touch. And this robot is kind of accurately manipulating, uh, kind of mimicking his movement. So that's kind of like a, that kind of speculative sort in the future about what if we distributing music as data, but play back by real mechanical like robotic band. So that was part of the show called the Digital Revolution in the Barbican and uh, it has been traveling like the last couple of years showing this installation piece. Also like working for uh, like a company like such as uh, Swarovski. So Swarovski is um, like, uh, quite famous for more about kind of crystal and more the optic side and also more about the visual aspect. But uh, I um, kind of proposed to Swarovski to creating musical instruments and they kind of try to find out the property of the potential to use crystal as a you know, musical instruments material. So this uh, looks like a vision of the um, machine and the installation. And basically like this kind of crystal looking ball is uh, uh, made, uh, yeah, it's a basically kind of crystal bell. So if you're hitting sound, actually has got kind of note in there. So I can show like how sounds like. I'm standing at as well, and then it comes to the design. Like, uh, um, I have recently uh, uh, launched this project, project called the Easy Record Maker. So, this is uh, ideas coming from like uh, like a media of the record, which is quite difficult to like uh, fabricate or like duplicate in your house. And uh, I, I was dreaming to creating like really like affordable and quite cheap to uh, producing like your own record in your own cutting machine. So I team up with a company called Gakken to creating like this machine. So basically you can make a five inch record the mono cutting, but uh, you can connect with uh, your phone and make your best book record. That was uh, I was working as well. So like there's a lot of like, different way. And the final, I'm gonna talk about with sound design as well. And then uh, like this, my studio at Pentagram has got a lot of different kind of musical instruments. And uh, each time has got different company or like a different sound design. I'm using different equipment to creating like sound design. Then I just want to talk about a bit like design, like uh, like podcast identity in the way because um, I'm always kind of describing about concept behind and also history of the company. And uh, design wise, like we want to present as this graphic aspect of the design into like sound, um, like composition. So we try to make two by four like rhythm and and the quite unusual rhythm pattern, but kind of making like sound to try to describe identity of design. introduced this project called uh, Sound of the Earth Pandemic Chapter. So this is like a, a while lockdown, uh, I have a team up with like a Dallas Museum Art to creating this piece. So idea for this project is uh, um, try to have like a browsing experience of the kind of what happening in the world and the people submit like sound and then people can like browsing and then and also like submit and sending message and also we, we can hear like what's happening in the world and you feel like part of the, this world as well. So like this website's quite simple. Like you have got like recording audio and you can actually automatically specify like a location by like a tag data. And if you want to listen to sound, you have to connect, uh, like just click on top of the dot and has got different soundscape sound coming out. Yeah. 
Okay. And uh, as a kind of like a sound, it's quite soothing sometimes and sometimes quite aggressive. But it's really nice to have like a different uh, um, sound yeah. experience. So like, uh, yeah, this is kind of quick presentation. Great, thank you very much. And um, yeah, I should have said at the beginning that you did uh, the audio for our podcast series. I must admit, I never knew that the, the, the time signature was based on the number of letters in the disease <laughs> yeah. name. Yes, that, that, no yeah. That's really yeah. clever. So I did notice all... it was a strange time signature. It's like six, yeah. digits, right? One, two, three, four, yeah. five. Six. Yeah, exactly. So it's not really like within a one bar. Like we keep like shifting two by four like rhythm. So what's like sounds like kind of just normal music, but the kind of we have got a bit like narrative behind for the sounds. So that's always we do in Pentagram. And um, you mentioned um, artificial intelligence at some point in your presentation. How much do you think artificial intelligence is going to take over music making? Are we going to need composers and, and musicians anymore? Or can technology put you all out of a job? Mm. It's quite difficult to predict what's going to be happening in the next couple of like, years because I think everything dramatically um, like, you know, developed these days. But uh, at the moment, like, artificial intelligence is perfect for kind of creating variations of different phrase and, you know, kind of specific means, but always kind of selection by like, you know, human, like, uh, because it's hard to know, like, what kind of music is kind of good for, like, uh, you know, you know, ac ac you know, like, accept by like, a large amount of people. So I think at the moment, like, uh, really great like a tools to have got the variation and for example if you make one variation of the music artificial intelligence algorithm can make thousands of them immediately has got defined pattern so that way as a creative tool is quite useful but in terms of the kind of uh, musical making from like a way really from the beginning or from zero it could be difficult, I think, because uh, it's perfect for mimicking and making variation. But uh, still, I do think humans kind of taste the like, necessary to making great music or sound design. So your job is safe for now, at least. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. At, the, at the beginning, we were talking about sort of sound in public spaces and the sounds of the city before the lockdown and then afterwards. But to what extent can sound be used in public spaces to influence people's behavior? I spoke to someone who works for the city of Eindhoven a few years ago, and they were experimenting with using sound and lights in the streets to stop mm. people fighting. <laughs> this yeah, this yeah. Of lots of bars where people tended to get drunk after football matches. Mm. Have you got any experience of that? And, and is it possible to use sound maybe sound that people are aware of, or even sound that people aren't aware of that changes how they mm. behave. Yeah, so that probably can one example is kind of a, some station such as Brixton, they keep playing like classical music in London, by London tra transport for London, isn't it? Because like, they want to ease aggression of the people in the station, <laughs> apparently. And uh, I'm not sure like kind of psychologically that works or not because uh, um, sound is quite sensitive and uh, I think as a sound designer it's impossible to kind of satisfy like 100 per, you know like 100 percent of people like always the kind of 30 percent or 40 percent people like kind of appreciate the sound that's quite successful example so like in terms of like, you know easing aggression of sound by classical music I'm not sure I can how psychological work but uh, something significant example I knew in Japan is uh, in Kyoto has got the like uh, intent intent kind of implanted like some like specific tree and the friction of the tree sound making white noise that's actually managed to reducing like kind of a car like sound and also like a soothing kind of effect to the people that I feel like kind of quite a beautiful way to using like sound I think but uh, it is always like related to some psychological like uh, you know kind of research requires it's hard to tell it's like uh, that method actually working or not and you mentioned at the beginning as well I think you were talking about 
how electric cars, they don't make as much sound as a petrol car. Um, and so car brands, they're working with sound designers to give you false engine noises. That already happens even in, I think even in petrol yeah. cars, you can change the mode from racing mode to um, silent mode. Is that, have you been involved in those kind of projects? Yes, like we we've talking with like a several company for like research phase. Unfortunately, I cannot share anything, but uh, it is really interesting because um, I think kind of using like, because I think government already made this kind of safety regulation about making sound, isn't it? Kind of sound guideline, and which is quite new things, and also it's keep changing every month for the that's kind of like, you know, a guide drawing at the moment, so which is quite exciting. And we did a lot of research about who design, you know, kind of car acceleration sound, like such as like Hans Zimmer, he designed like a, I think like a BMW kind of like starting sound or Mercedes, I forgot, but uh, he designed the sound, but uh, it's almost like uh, you're in the interstellar kind of spaceship kind of feeling to like accelerating sound. Um, then we've tried to uh, creating something like more of the daily base and every day like you're listening like uh, one specific sound when you like start up engine and so on but uh, importantly we try to creating like uh, like that sound to be not like repetitable because the human brain is easy to recognizing like reputation of the sound because I think human brain is quite sensible about kind of repetition of the music because that's the reason why like sound torture using repetition of the music. So we try to avoid like giving any uncomfortability to operating cars. So that's kind of thing that we have been working. And you were going to prepare for us, or you did prepare for us, but we're not showing it just yet. Uh, uh, a movie you made about acid house music. Can you tell us mm. about that? And, and hopefully we are going to be able to show it one day. Yeah, okay. We'd yeah. like to chat with you about that. But right, tell, right, tell yeah. Us about, tell us about that project. Was that something to do with the Design Museum's exhibition? No, it was for the Stanley Picker Gallery. Um, so uh, in the Kingston College, actually. Um, so the like, reason why I did that project is uh, um, like more about uh, like a huge changes happen for like Brexit. And um, it's more about, uh, I'm, I, I strongly think quite similar situation what we are uh, now, it's quite similar to like the 90s time in the, especially in England. So kind of basically kind of conservative government uh, take over like all political decision. And at that time, uh, like youth culture, um, like this really big movement called Second Summer of Love and in the later, like early 90s actually, and later 80s and like early 90s. And which is actually kind of a, kind of became forceful, like express like youth opinion and the culture. And then uh, it became a really big movement and actively like a government and also so many media kind of bashing it, like tried to close, you know, kind of closing the asset house party and so on. So I think mm -hmm. the situation is quite similar, but I do think music and the sound could be the force to um, kind of like, uh, um, against and protest um, and the kind of you know backing force for like protests, so that's why I created me uh, you know kind of a record called Acid Brexit, kind of like people to remembering like what's happening. So basically, kind of sampling like voice of some politician's voice, and uh, like they like just talking quite illogical and something wrong, and then that's kind of repeated to like telling people like something wrong is happening and then uh, hopefully got this kind of music to forcing to people to against something so that's why i made that project and in the 60s there was a whole lot of uh, movement of protest music the, the punk movement that you talked about before was a protest movement but music doesn't seem to be used to protest anymore it, it seems to be more often about consumption or well, obviously emotions like romance and love and, and sex mm -hmm. but what happened to music as a vehicle for political protest or um racial justice yeah. or any of those kind of topics yeah that's a kind of actually quite interesting question actually because uh, when i moved to london that was 2002 i think and then that time was quite exciting time because there's quite a lot of music was created, like even music genre was originally created in like London. 
and that's quite original and that was identity of the community and uh, there's a very really strong identity behind for each music such as like uh, i'm talking about one music genre called grime that was came from i think like uh, like uh, or church and that kind of area, and more about the kind of black community created that music. But the uh, sound is kind of uh, really merging from like a dub, kind of Jamaican background, and also hip hop, and also producer like uh, I think East European producer or like people from like uh, East, like uh, Eastern country people creating melodies. So it has got a really big merge, and that became quite a huge identity at that time. But unfortunately, like this 10 years, I haven't seen any new music was created. So I feel like, uh, like music itself like lost power in the way. But uh, I do think like there's so much corruption and the revealing problem at the moment. I, I strongly think like a youth culture gonna create new movement, I think. You think there is gonna be a new movement, did you think? In the three yeah, I think so. Because once kind of something crucial things happen, like once, you know, your position in some like, uh, like, you know, uncomfortable environment, like uh, music is always like uh, one of the best expression because that's how like hip hop started, you know, kind of instead of like, fighting, like kind of started like a, like rhyming battle is happening. So it will really, like happening quite soon, I think. Yeah, and then hip hop also became a sort of protest music with people like N.W.A. But um, well, I, I guess we're still waiting for the, the process music of our time. There's definitely lots to protest against, that's for sure. Mm. Yeah, that, that's also a kind of my like, longer time wish to kind of inventing like a new music genre in a way. Um, that's always I'm going to try, but I never managed that. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds like you've got a lot of other things to do. Yuri, it's been great to talk to you. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Thank you. And, um, we're going to be showing a little movie now about one of the projects that you mentioned mm -hmm. before. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about the thing we're going to show next on the scene? Uh, look, which, which project like, are we going to show then? Like, uh, it's the pandemic one, right, Seb? Yeah, so like, we're going to do, like, I'm going to quickly talk about that project, yeah. So, so basically, like, that's kind of briefly I introduced for like, this presentation and then uh, that's like uh, I'm gonna instruct because I, I want to like uh, people to like participate in this project, so it'd be nice to have. Yeah, so like yeah, so sound of this like a pandemic like uh, chapter. So basically, I'm gonna like introduce now. Okay, well we'll be showing that next, and um, hopefully also your acid house piece at some point in the near future. Yeah, it would be great. Yeah. Thanks so much, Yuri. Thanks great. so much. Thank you. Enjoy the beach, and hope to yes, see you. Thank you. Yeah, in the real world before too long. Yes, Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.